And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. It is the beginning of October 2015, my favorite month because of the of the autumn foliage. Foliage. That's French, I think. <laughs> the autumn, the beauty of autumn, even though what you told me a long time ago, the beautiful colors of the leaves means death. <laughs> It is. It is uh, uh, leading up to that. winter. The beauty of October here right now is that the heating season began on October the first. Yeah, rather, rather early. Yeah, I would say. Which means this clunker is going to be kicking in. That's correct. It's going to be going because I believe it's only fifty-one at the moment. You know what I named this? Would I name your uh, heating system? What does it run on kerosene? Right now, in the winter, it's it's a mix. Of, it's a blend of oil. A blend of Earl. Yeah. The Duke of Earl. Well, I I call him Shemp, because when he goes on, he goes. <laughs> Remember how Shemp used to like make that sound yeah. from the Three Stooges? Yeah. Shemp. Um, the oh. Three Stooges. Oh. Here I am going on. The air, and I'm not even introducing us. I mean, you know. Anyway, the beginning of October. October is my favorite time of year. The beauty uh, of the uh, autumn foliage, uh, and also, it's a fun month because Halloweeny, All Hallows Eve, is at the end, and that, uh, and then after that we have uh, um, the, the great holiday where I gorge myself that I, that I enjoy so much. Uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, even though uh, the uh, Native Americans sh sure had no reason to give thanks, you know, uh, uh, with the with the uh, the colonists, the pilgrims. But anyway, Why that's another I show. Have forked tongue. Pale face did speaketh with forked tongue. That's true. Forked tongue, like uh, like uh, our uh, evangelical serpent. Taking up serpents, which you'll see later on. Anyway, <clears throat> it's time for my decorative scarfs that you will see every week. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze. I think ragweed is out there, right? Yes. Welcome, everyone, to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And uh, I would like to introduce my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? What? 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 Well, that means you're alive. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Okay, which uh, is very important. Uh, seven bells for my, my co-host and mentor. Just want to let everybody know that everything we discuss <clears throat> politically is part of our series called Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Mm. Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There is the conch. So feel the energy of the conch. See if I get any progressive messages from the great beyond. From Neptune. <laughs> and um, I might as well get this over with early. And you, all you boobs out there, all you uh, tea baggers and, and, and uh, half-wit, uh, split pea brain Americans, the ones that not only uh, vote against your best interests by voting Republican, but the ones that don't vote at all, hey. all of you collectively are split pea brains. You call them mustard seed brains, because oh, a mustard mustard seed is much smaller, smaller than a split than pea. pea brain, yeah. You know what? Let it be mustard seed. Coin it. Anyway, f everything you've heard since the uh, the bullshit Reagan years, Ronald Reagan, about trickle down economics was all a lie. It never worked. It could have worked if you keep the jobs in the U.S., but no such luck. They didn't allow it to work because 
what we actually have is siphon up economics siphon up to the top uh, one to twenty percent to the yeah. to the fat cats yeah. Yeah. to the well, CEOs. It goes, it goes to the twenty percent, but it goes more to the one percent because they make more. Well, the twenty they get more. The twenty percent would be the oligarchy, and the one percent would be the plutocracy. If you want to make those distinctions, but, but I wouldn't make the distinctions but, at all but, between them. But they're both they're both you know so, in interchangeable synonymous. That's right. You know, whether you say corporate oligarch or corporate plutocracy, they're interchangeable. I just say the rich. Yeah. It's okay. just like, um, That's all. it's just like um, a capitalism uh, is, an, uh, corporate, uh, is a corporate uh, oligarchy and it's also fascism. Uh, um, it, is a, it, is a, it is a form of totalitarian uh, uh, system and but people get them uh, get everything you know they get socialism and communism uh, mixed up with totalitarianism and uh, you know I mean I mean a, a socialist is not a fascist if they have real socialism like democratic socialism for of, uh, of, uh, northern Europe the worst thing you can say about a socialist is he's a utopian Okay. Well, that's a good word. And that's pretty good, isn't that's it? That's pretty Utopia. damn good word. That's pretty fair to everybody. Yeah, so. because the Scandinavian countries have the closest you can get to a utopian society mm -hmm. because of the fairness of it. Mm -hmm. Wealth distribution, fair tax system, free health care and free education for all, and making the rich pay for it like they should. That's utopian. That is real socialism. It's not. Uh, um, they're moochers. All of them. They're moochers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we we mustn't forget the the uh, the all the Republican moochers we have in the United States. We have Republican moochers. I don't think so. Well, we we have we have. They're, well, first of all, they're on, they're on the take. <gasps> they uh, and second of all, because they're on the take. They are beholden to the one percent, to the co big corporations, like you said before, and the big corporations uh, write the laws, right? What did that one guy, that one? Uh, so uh, that uh, isn't uh, mooching. What did that one assembly? I think it's assembly guy. Uh, 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 says uh, somebody put up a bill or something of that nature, and he says that he it's his freedom to take a bribe. You're interfering with his freedom to take a bribe. So, so uh, uh, um, unethical behavior is—they uh, make an excuse for it. it they right. want it to be allowed. What Wall Street do? They want it to be allowed. Yes. Per permitted. Uh, uh, some um, some Washington politician uh, who is very uh, who has been very anti-marijuana was caught possessing marijuana. A marijuana. <laughs> So, when you when you think of conservatives, I think of two words off the bat: hypocrisy and greed. <laughs> now, if you want to throw in corruption, I, you can actually you can throw corruption in with greed, uh -huh. because it, you know they all work together. You know, I mean, uh, you never you're never rich enough with these people. Um, and uh, let me say really. Let me say, uh, greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. Uh, oh, my, my number one administrator, Sash Boyle. Greetings to Sash Boyle. Uh, and to all my administrators, actually, of my Facebook groups. Um, they're starting to come around with posting and uploading. It's, it's, it, it, it's a slow process. I really don't understand how people cannot think logically, like this guy up here, old man Spock, logically, and why they would post so many great uh, bits of information on their own profile <coughs> with me. a limited friends list yeah. where they can uh, uh, turn, instead, they can post it on a high volume group. 
with a, a few thousand members. I do not understand why they do it. Maybe they're cowards uh, when it comes to uh, voicing their opinions publicly. You know, there are a lot of spineless people in um, mostly in the United States. Amer you know, Americans are are pretty spineless. That's why they can't. That's why they're afraid of change. You know, they're afraid of. Uh, changing the system and voting for somebody different than their parents and their grandparents voted for. Maybe that's why those those inbred idiots in Kentucky that are dirt poor and they don't have a pot to piss in keep on voting Republican. They are afraid well, that their life might actually get better. The Carson supporters, as I've said before, believe the Republican Party is still in the days of Abraham Lincoln. And better yet, uh, 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 Eisenhower <laughs> and Teddy Roosevelt. Eisenhower and Teddy Roosevelt. I, I don't know, I was never a, a big Lincoln fan. Um, um, but yeah, Teddy Roosevelt, Lincoln and Eisenhower they were the, the last of the good guy Republicans. They were more moderate, would you say? Yeah. Well, there was, as I say, there was a time when both parties had different uh, sections. They had conservatives, mm. they had liberals, they had moderates. They, they each party. They were populists. But the, uh, the conservatives, uh, you know, hijacked the Republican Party and that... That's, the end of it. Well, look at Ch Tricky Dick, uh, <coughs> Richard Milhouse Nixon. He was born in a very modest household. He mm -hmm. was not born with a And he resented that fact all of his life. He was never he born. He carried that with him. But he was never born in, 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 with a silver spoon in his mouth. I know, but he carried that with him in, in, in a sense of, you're not better than me. It was always that way of thinking with him. I'm surprised he... Um, he became a Republican, to be honest with you. Hey, what is that? Uh, what did that one guy, the re, uh, the guy that just changed his, uh, he just changed to a Democrat? He said, the, "I didn't leave the Republican Party. The Republican Party left me." Well, you probably noticed uh, that it, they were becoming too radically crazy. They were going too far to the right. And even Barry, Go Barry Goldwater, he said. I was going to mention yeah, him. Well, you know, with the, the military-industrial complex, once that gets its fangs into everything, it's the end. And the religious nuts. You mentioned that too. So yes. he, so Barry Goldwater was he feared was, that was uh, also a moderate Republican. I would say. Uh, I want to, um, in a sense, I want to have a moment of silence for the. Uh, for the deaths of the uh, people in the, in the recent shooting in Oregon, mm -hmm. and I also want to have a moment of silence uh, for uh, the death of Yvonne Craig, died Batgirl. Ah, Yvonne Craig, you know. Uh, um, I didn't see anything on that. Yeah, Batgirl uh, from the old series. Uh, I was watching. Uh, she she was uh, the, she was in a Star Trek episode. She she did a dance. She was the slave girl. Oh yes, I remember. Who did a dance? I think she was greenish looking. Green girl, yes. yes. She did the dance. That was Yvonne Craig. That was, right. yeah. So, so yeah, but her uh, Batman. That was the uh, the old one on TV. The series with uh, what you call what was with it? Adam West. Adam West. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, she was uh, later. That was not too much. But Barbara uh, Gordon was. That. She was Commissioner Gordon's uh, 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 daughter in the series. Okay. And she, her name was Barbara Gordon, and, and she's was Batgirl, and uh, and uh, I saw a picture of her. Uh, it's amazing how people that look so good when they were young, how they age, how yes. they aged, and then they look so different when they're older. Some people age well. But you know, the, 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 there's a rumor going around, and I think it's true that uh, Caucasian women do not age well compared to. Well, uh, I don't know if it has anything to do. I have women of color have always had that smooth skin. Well, it it it's obviously wrinkle free. It's all obviously the food and drink. Maybe they party too much. 
Well, you don't have to party. It's the, the you know, like the acrylamides. It's the, uh, it's the uh, lack of vitamin C, and your collagen goes to hell, and all of this crap that happens. Oh, I fight tooth and nail with people that uh, that honestly don't believe in any supplement. I mean, oh uh, yeah, I have, I have Billy Morrill tell me, how, how do you know that great turmeric, uh, standardized extract of turmeric with curcumin that you're taking is really what it says on the label? Because somebody did studies. I says, well, what about the what about the eight prescription drugs you're taking? What about they're down on calcium now? Oh, calcium you know, don't, don't help the women who osteoporosis when they get older and stuff like that. Well, uh, osteoporosis from uh, lack of estrogen in postmenopausal post women having a lack of estrogen, I think that's the primary reason for uh, bone loss. But the calcium you need every day to keep things in, in their well, okay. proper uh, 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 yeah. Uh, you balance. When you're talking yeah. about calcium, magnesium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, you're talking about the macro minerals. It's part of a basic nutritional program. Phosphorus, you don't need to take supplementary because it's loaded yeah. in, in, in the average diet. There's a lot of phosphorus, but calcium, magnesium, I mean, these are really yeah, you the don't foundation. You don't get your uh, uh, your uh, normal uh, c uh, calcium daily. You're going to steal it from your blood, your bones, and you're going to have trouble. It's like lack of protein. Your body will cannibalize. Too, yes, exactly. With too much protein, will uh, will uh, take calcium from rob it from the bones. Well, too. it puts a strain on your you know, on your on your kidneys. kidneys uh, and everything, yeah. But not enough protein, like in a calorie yes, in a let me finish. That's like true. in a calorie restricted diet, which people I personally know, the professionals I know are still promoting the calorie restrictive diet, portion control can also make one deficient in nutrients as well as protein. You will see that those who are doing credible studies on the calorie restriction diet make sure that the supplements are there absolutely because as i've seen uh, as i've said many times i saw this one study of calorie restriction on these mice the little mouse and during the time they were doing the calorie restriction yeah. the mouse had a sort of white band around its hair really where it had been lacking the proper nutrients really it was like a, a belt around the body. So you know that if you're not getting your proper ba uh, balance of supplements daily, yeah. you're robbing your body, okay, of, of certain things that you need. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, that's... And you don't get them back. That's why it's best to, to carb count and 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 refrain from all refined carbohydrates no white flour or no no sugar that is the way to go not calorie restriction yeah. uh but now uh people are starting to catch cold because the sudden dip in temperature flu season is coming up so stock up on your homeopathic uh uh cold and flu products like uh, silicoxidum and uh, things of that nature take plenty of vitamin c uh, we recommend Twin Lab Super C powder. Um, uh, what's a good maintenance? Two or three grams a day for healthy individuals. Uh, ten, I would say ten grams. I would say three at least. At uh, least. Yeah. Te uh, Linus Pauling protocol. Ten grams when you're sick. I take five when I'm well. Well, you have a bowel tolerance too to vitamin C. You know, you got. I reckon so. Because, you know, it don't bother me yet. It five. doesn't bother you yet. You know, if no. you get the runs, that means you got to cut back. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, that's, that's uh, sorry for sticking a little holistic health talk in here. But, you know, uh, the show is... Sorry for sticking a little poop talk in there, too. It, the show is extremely... Uh, uh, hard hitting. Versatile, varied, varied. And, yes, we are hard hitting, even though some hecklers would differ. 
But let's do that moment of silence for the victims and for Yvonne Craig. Okay, uh, you know, um, some people, all right, people do acknowledge the fact that criminals get their weapons from the black market, which is true, but there are they these... They get them from the regular market. But these kids... At the, at but the these, gun shows. But these kids, some of them who have a history of, of psychiatric disorder, these kids that should not have a weapon are able to get these guns legally and automatic weapons too and militarized type weapons mm -hmm. yeah. who the hell the police should not even be militarized and here we have kids with a psychiatric background that are that are um stocked to the to the hilt but there's no background checks from pillar to post with with weapons this kid this kid in Oregon was loaded had 14 weapons or 13, whatever. How the hell did a kid like that, a legally, trouble... Legally, he got a, them all legally. A troubled child get all these automatic weapons legally. Legal. So, yes, yes, the, there is a black market out there for weapons, but it is a proven fact, and Barack Obama said, that uh, nations like the United Kingdom... Uh, Nations that have strict uh, gun laws mm -hmm. it, it statistically have much lower no kidding. violent crime. So, you know, black market or no black market is no excuse for being uh, uh, for a person who does not, should not have a gun at all, not even a, a little Saturday night special. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't give a, a, a psychiatric patient. Or somebody on medication, not even that. They don't. They shouldn't even have a crossbow, or, or, you know, or anything. I mean, for that matter. I mean, and but they're able to get these weapons legally. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Republicans. They uh, want it that way. They don't. They don't because want because they don't trust the government. Well, guess who is the government? They own the house, do they not? Them, so they but, are the government. But there are but there are multitudes of normal law abiding citizens that have guns. Nobody's taken their guns away yet. Nobody wants to take their guns away. Yeah, well but that has you know that, uh, that back we you with. know, you do a background check for a reason. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to worry about as far as your collection goes. Mm. Right? If you have nothing to hide. You know, but uh, that's a, that's a sad situation. There's way too but many the Republicans feel in the United States. Way too many. That if there are background checks, they will be able to come after you and confiscate your gun. Well, you know how paranoid when they want to take over. Well, you know how paranoid they are. Yes, but they are the government. But they are the government. But right. I I do believe. So they they don't trust themselves. I do believe the American citizens. That are um, they have their heads screwed on right should be allowed to bear arms and have guns. I I, I believe uh, in the uh, the thing about the rogue government going haywire and you know the people need to have. We weapons. already have a rogue government. All right, it's called the Republicans. Oh, they're nuts, man! They're they're absolutely well, crazy. But why are we waiting for this other rogue government? That's going to confiscate our weapons. When we already have a rogue government, which is confiscating our liberties. And a rogue government who is uh, obsessed with perpetual wars for profit, or profiteering. Yes, they confiscate our money, our tax money. We paid how much to Wall Street? This is what I meant by uh, Republicans being the, the biggest moochers of all. They're, 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 yeah. they're taking your tax dollars and they're giving it to the rich. And now, yeah. now you have <laughs> horse face Fiorina that wants to attack Russia. And, and, and oh, well, uh, the bullshit spewing from her mouth about Planned Parenthood. That was, uh, in that case, there was a miscarriage. That was a miscarriage. It's all a lie. It was all a lie, not 
and abortion. That's correct. Horse face for your arena. Uh, um, I saw the baby on the table, its legs kicking, and they were going to wait to harvest its brain. Religious nuts, you see? They're crazy, man. <laughs> they're, they're absolutely bonkers. Uh, um, they're just insane people. Um, they're they're anti insane people that are in charge. They're anti-science. <laughs> Their, uh, their religion is a cult. It's not based on the God of the Bible. Uh, uh, Carly Fiorina doesn't uh, even deserve to run for president because no. her track record is, is atrocious. Her, her, her track record in business is, is despicable. Um, but you see how Republicans conduct themselves. You got people like that, Nor Oliver North, you got Newt Gingrich ethics ethics violations while he was speaking the house etc they're on TV they have their own shows they are respected they get millions and millions of dollars to run for president this is the country we live in could you imagine if uh, 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 Kim Davis and Carly Fiorina were guests on the Ann Cunter, I mean Coulter show on Fox News that, that's way too much ugly in one studio that would be a Halloween special for Fox News. I mean, that is the, that is a repulsive. You talk about Planned Parenthood and, and, and reducing unwanted pregnancy. Just put up three eight by ten photos in your bedroom of those three witches, and 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 that will thwart your uh, carnal uh, escapades. The witches of Eastwick. The witches of Eastwick. Yeah, you you won't feel like having sex after looking at their faces. Ugh. Now. Uh, Speaking of sex, speaking of the um, the lunatic that's getting way too much face time, uh, the ugly redneck inbred looking woman with the billboard for a forehead, Kim Davis. You have a, a reading on her, right? So if you want, if we want to get rid of her early in the show which I would love to because she's nauseating. She's, oh, let me well, do then a I have to look for the re I, I do these readings well, as they lie. But, well, being that I got the, the, um, um, the evangelical serpent in my hand, I will, I, got the, the I will imitate the right-wing fundamentalist evangelicals of the Republican Party mm -hmm. by taking up serpents. <laughs> No, that's a turkey. Taking up serpents, and here is the evangelical serpent. And you found it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I will wear, <laughs> while you're talking about this, this bitch, oh. this insane bitch who thinks, who, who, who is so delusional and, and, and arrogant and full of herself to think that a great man like Pope Francis would want to spend time with her. A, a, a totally insane person. It's incredible. It's nerve beyond nerve. So I will wear the evangelical serpent during this reading. Go ahead, Chief. The Vatican turned the tables on the Kim Davis affair on Friday. Not only did it distance the Pope, Pope Francis from her claims that he endorsed her stand on same-sex marriage, it said the only real audience Francis had in Washington was with a small group that included a gay couple. Oh. The revelations doled out during the course of the day put a new twist on Francis's encounter with Davis after she and her lawyers insisted that her invitation to meet the Pope on September 24th amounted to an affirmation of her cause. The Davis case has sharply divided the United States. And news of Francis's meeting with the Kentucky clerk who went to jail after refusing to issue same-sex marriage licenses 
had upended his six-day US, U.S. tour. During the visit, Francis had tried to steer clear of such hot-button issues, only to see the Davis affair dominate the post-trip news cycle. The Vatican spokesman, the Reverend Federico Lombardi, sought to give the Vatican's take of events in a statement early on Friday, saying Francis had met with several dozen people at the Vatican's embassy before leaving Washington for New York. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize he was only here for six days. Davis was among them and had a brief meeting he said. Lombardi said such meetings are common during papal trips and are due to the Pope's kindness but she, and availability. But, she, but Kim Davis put words in That's correct. the Pope's mouth That's correct. About, about him supposedly supporting, giving her, her. supporting her in her decision. Stay strong! You're religious, not you. She I wasn't very has, Italian, but hey. No, she's uh, she has a secular job. She was uh, uh, elected to be the supervisor of that department. She has a secular job. She's paid to do her job. It's as simple as that. And uh, well, uh, she also has a a hypocritical ad attitude with her her quote-unquote religion. Her religion actually. Because being a fornicator and an adulterer, she thinks is less of a problem than putting her name on the marriage license. Mm -hmm. Sin is sin. That's yeah, true. But, what but, was it? but you commit one, you've committed them all. Yeah, but her religion should not, uh, should not have anything to do with what she's paid for. Which well, that is correct, but that's her, another matter, her isn't it? Job. That's another matter. Yeah, I'm talking know. about a strictly personal matter with her. That's like with her. That's like she, that's like comparing a Burger King employee from selling and telling a customer, uh, "I cannot touch and serve you this uh, barbecued pulled pork sandwich uh, yeah. because I am Muslim. I refuse to touch the pulled pork." Thank you. We have a Commerce Clause in the United States Constitution. Yeah. So when you're in a business and you're dealing with the public and etc. And we have a Civil Rights Law, 1965, that when a black person comes to your luncheonette counter Sir. and wants to be served, you serve him. Right. And if it's a gay couple... Or you close your business. And if it's a gay couple, you serve them. Or you close down your business. It's very simple. Very simple. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, she's uh, she's uh, interfering her personal opinions with her job, and she's not doing her job. She's just, uh, um, you know. Of course, she was arrested for contempt of court, uh, and she put words in Pope Francis's mouth. I mean. Um, the Pope would probably say, you know, keep your re your religious opinions out of your job. Do your job. Give unto Caesar what is belongs to Caesar. That's correct. The Pope did not enter into the details of the situation of Mrs. Davis, and his meeting with her should not be considered a form of support of her position in all of its particular and complex aspects, Lombardi said. The only real audience granted by the Pope at the Nunciature was with one of his former students and his family. Oh boy. The man, Yeo Grassi, was later identified by the New York Times and CNN as an openly gay Argentine caterer who lives in Washington. 
in a video posted online, Grassi, is shown entering the Vatican's embassy, embracing his former teacher, and introducing Francis to his longtime partner, whom Francis recognized from a previous meeting, as well as an elderly Argentine woman and a few friends from Asia. Yeah, well, he, he was a teacher, you know, he was a, um, was he a college professor in Argentina? He, he does have the master's degree in chemistry, so he, he had students, he had people that knew him. Lombardi later confirmed that Grassi had asked to present his mother and several friends to the Pope during the Pope's stay in Washington. As noted in the past, the Pope, as pastor, has maintained many personal relationships with people in a spirit of kindness and welcome and dialogue. It wasn't immediately clear if Grassi's mother was in the audience. Grassi introduced the elderly woman named Salame as an Argentine friend. Mm -hmm. The Vatican could not immediately explain the discrepancy. Right. The disclosures completely changed the narrative of Davis's encounter, making clear that Francis wanted another, more significant audience to come to light, that of his former student, who happens to be gay, and his longtime partner. An audience is different from a meeting in that it is planned, a somewhat formal affair. Popes have audiences with heads of state. They have meetings and greetings sessions with benefactors or other VIPs. Right. They're not all private either. Many, many are public. So the fact that Lombardi stressed Grassi's encounter as the only real audience in Washington mm -hmm. made clear that Francis wanted to emphasize it over Davis's brief meeting mm -hmm. along with several dozen other people. Yeah, well, I found that Kim Davis's video to be quite nauseating. Mm -hmm. She was crying, God doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> I, I, it hurts me when people say God doesn't love me. Well, I got news for her. Like you told me Wednesday, God has cut himself off from mankind That's since, correct. since Adam and Eve uh, That's correct. were kicked out of the, were evicted from the Garden of Eden. That's correct. So, you know. And he has allowed himself to choose. Choose! Now and then certain one he was he communicated with certain select people for a reason none can come to me except the father draw him you see the right. big difference so all those but what do we got with these Joel Osteens and these pop-offs and this thing we got all these big revivals I mean we, we come up here come up here Come up here and, and, and conf uh, confess you for God. Come here. Bless you, my son. Yeah, they, they love to make this uh, prayer a public spectacle. Well, they make believe that they can come to God of right. their own volition. They can, su not the they can summon him. Yes. And they can heal people by summoning him. Well, he can also win football games for them. Yeah, like uh, 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 Tim Tebow praying in the middle of the football field. <laughs> that's that's pure arrogance and, and vanity. Now, did you uh, see the um, uh, the brother Nathaniel video concerning John Hagee hey. about the apocalypse and and all this? Uh, uh, um, he, yeah. I don't think it played. Brother Nathaniel is it was not with the white horse or something. Yeah, it, it, well, he shows bits of pieces of Hagee's sermon concerning, uh, you know, 
the evangelical view on the end times and the apocalypse. Uh, of course, us progressives are part of the white horse and not them. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, yes. yes. You know, I mean, we're part of the, of the false uh, 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 pro prophets in the false church, but not them. Th they, are the tr they are the true false prophets. Mm -hmm. And they are part of the white horse of the apocalypse, not the progressives. That's correct. The progressives are much closer to what the Bible says than conservatives. You know, but so that's it. I could take off the uh, evangelical serpent, or do you have another uh, evangelical? Donald Trump. No, no, that ain't. That's not evangelical. Even though he might think. I mean, the Bible is his favorite fa book. Is the Bible? His Bible is his favorite book. How yeah. about that? Uh, I, I have to attend the the men's room. Continue. I, I hear you. He unveiled a detailed plan for tax reform this week. Four pages, complete with numbers and a graph. It didn't win universal praise. One conservative economist dismissed it as unserious. But merely having a plan vaulted Trump into an elite group. The GOP presidential candidates who have bothered to lay out specific economic proposals. The strangest thing about this year's Republican campaign, other than Trump, is now it's been hijacked by social issues, immigration, abortion, even whether a Muslim can serve as president. The issues most voters list as their biggest concerns, economic growth and jobs, have taken a back seat. Yes, the leading uh, candidates all promise they will spur the economy by lowering taxes and cutting government spending. Standard conservative boilerplate but except for Trump, Jeb Bush, and Marco Rubio, none of them have said exactly how they're going to do that. <laughs> ben Carson has said he'd favor a biblical tithe <laughs> of 10%, <laughs> which seems like cheating. Ted Cruz said he favors a flat tax. Of course. With one rate for everybody. Consumption taxes. But he hasn't said what that rate would be. And Carly Fiorina has said merely that she'd make taxes lower and simpler. Yeah, for the rich. Well, to them, that's the only ones who pay taxes. Oh yeah, nobody else pays taxes. Not, right. not the middle class. That's correct. Right. The middle class have the burden. Um, um, they, uh, they, they don't have, they don't give any detailed solutions. Or, or the plan itself, the plan of uh, what they want. Uh, I guarantee you a Republican mm -hmm. plan will always end up benefiting the wealthy and hurting the middle class and, and the poor. Chris Christie and Rand Paul have offered specific proposals too, but they're not exactly leading candidates at this point. No. Still, among the proposals with real detail, there's a rough consensus <clears throat> Excuse me, and it comes down to this. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> lower taxes for everybody, but especially for the wealthy. Why? Why? The, why do we need lower taxes for everybody? I think the wealthy have been on a because if they don't offer that, they'll never. You'll, you'll never have us uh, allow for the wealthy to have lower taxes. But the wealthy have been on a tax vacation for over 30 years. Uh, duh. No, forget it. Well, they, I guess they, they're, they're not in favor of uh, free health care and a free education for all. <laughs> Socialist! Socialist! Oh, how, how, do, uh, how does uh, the average American... Uh, better him or herself he's got they got to pay out of pocket to go to school get a student loan of course with high interest of course of 
course. Who is supposed to make money in this country? The bank. How do you pay back the student and the loan rich. if there's no job market out there? How do you pay back there's the student There's 97 loan? million people that need jobs in this country and can't get them for one reason or another. Yeah, and, and 97 million, that's almost one third of the population. And, and a percentage, a good percentage of that population has an outstanding resume with experience, with college, education, wow. diplomas, certifications, degrees, and they still can't get a job with a living wage. Because that was a lie. It was a lie to say that, the, well, you have to better yourself to be able to get those better jobs. So these students end up in debt. Who's making that money? Who's making that money if you've got to better yourself? The schools. That's what it's all about. And and the and the lending institutions that you owe the student loan right. with high interest to, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you can't pay it back, so you're in debt for the rest of your life, right? Uh, didn't what you McGall do? Didn't they do that with the uh, uh, the uh, bankruptcy uh, bankruptcy laws? There was a time when you could write off your house, you write off your car. Hold on, Shemp. All right, go ahead. You write off your house, you write off your car, you write off your, uh, 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 all of your debts and everything, and you're free! You're free to begin again! Not anymore! No, you're not, you're never free. That's it. They want to suck you dry like a vampire. Exactly. Exactly. All the candidates would cut corporate taxes significantly. Oh, sure. Cut corporate taxes. They're, they're hardly paying any now. Well, like 60% of them don't pay any taxes. Cut corporate taxes significantly. Well, these are the people that, that give them the bribes and they take it. Okay. Absolutely. And that's a cornerstone of GOP policy. To give business a break. A break? Like they haven't been doing it for over 30 years. And according to tax experts, they'd all blow a hole in the federal budget. Why don't they give us a break and keep the jobs in the United States? Oh, uh, well, you know, even, even Trumpy, he's only going to charge them 10% if they bring the money back. Once. What happened to his 30%? So the next year they can do the same damn thing. What happened to his 30%? 35%. That's for products. Products. They're produced over there. I'm talking about the money but is, that they have stashed overseas right now. But wouldn't this be a slap on the wrist? This this uh, 10%? I mean, to. Yes, and it's only good for one year. What about the next year? When they do the same thing? Listen. He, he who makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Donald Trump has an underlying agenda. All multi-millionaires and billionaires have an underlying selfish agenda of greed. They just, uh, they just decorate it in a nice, positive, warm and fuzzy way for the mainstream. Well, his taxes will be lower. Right. Mr. Trump. With his plan, uh, they'll blow a hole in the federal budget of 2.4 trillion dollars or more over the next 10 years. Only a few years ago, Republicans, especially Tea Party ones, spend much of their time lamenting the growth of the federal budget and the national debt. This year's candidates, however, barely mention that worry. Instead, they rely on an article of faith that has been central to Republicans since the days of Ronald Reagan. Lower taxes will stimulate enough economic growth to make the deficit go away. You see how that worked under G.W. Bush? The plan, Trump's plan, 
will grow the American economy at a level that it hasn't seen in decades, Trump promised. Rubio's plan is the most interesting in some respects. Like everyone else, he would cut the top income tax rate. In this case, from 39.6 to 35 percent. See, the first thing he does is cut the top tax rate. It, it, not, not do something, not do the right thing like cut the middle class tax rate. But or in any other way to put more money into the hands of the consumer. Right, the little guy. Yeah, that the will benefit the economy. The true of consumer, the more money you put into the pocket of, of the mainstream, the poor and the middle class, the more you stimulate the economy. It's a no-brainer. And he would reduce taxes on capital gains. And dividend income to zero. A boom to wealthy investors. But the centerpiece of Rubio's plan, at least for campaign purposes, is a big increase in the tax credit for families with children from $1,000 per child to $2,500 per child. See? Now that's to get the middle class on board, baby. So we can get those big tax cuts for the rich. It's called trickle down, isn't it? Pistol down. Uh, it's a middle class tax cut that favors big families. Bush's tax cut is even bigger. He cut the top income tax rate down to 28%. <laughs> Baby Jeppy? That's correct. Uh, he cut the top rate on capital gains from 23.8% to 20%. See, Jebby is the one that wants to, for, for African Americans, wants to replace all that free stuff they're getting with hope. He wants to give them hope. <laughs> and the top rate of interest income from 39.6% percent to 20 percent. All those breaks would mostly favor the wealthy. But Bush offers some breaks for low-income workers too. He'd increase the standard deduction and the earned income tax credit. Measures that would free 15 million more Americans from paying income tax at all. He would pay for some of the cuts by eliminating the current tax deduction for state and local taxes. Tough on people in high state taxes like California. And capping most other deductions at 2% of income. Tough on people with jumbo mortgages. Mm -hmm. If Bush's tax cut is big, Trump's is appropriately Huge! They're so predictable, Republicans. But otherwise similar. Instead of Bush's top rate of 28%, Trump proposes a top rate of 25%. He proposes the same cut in capital gains to 20%, and deeper cut in the top corporate tax rate to 15%. He said he would phase out most deductions and other loopholes for the wealthy. But he didn't provide any detail. It's just general generalizations. Uh, um, well, they don't have, when they debate uh, Democrats or progressives, they don't have facts ever. So how could we expect them to have details about any of their proposals, any of their plans? Well, because if they give us details, they won't get elected. They won't get elected because there are no details. Well, the detail, there are details, it's just not what you want to hear. They always favor the rich. As a mainstream. You see, when you hear the words like Main Street versus Wall Street, 
See, Main Street is the middle class, small businesses, emerging growth stores. This is the middle class. Um, um, uh, professionals, middle class. Um, and these are the people be, that are carrying the tax burden that should be getting all the tax breaks. These are the true consumers along with the poor. So, you know, if a Republican says we should have only a consumption tax and we should eliminate the IRS, well, being that the rich are not the true consumers, that would ensure that the entire burden would stay on the poor and the middle class. And in a flourish of Trumpian marketing, he said, individuals earning less than $25,000 a year would send the IRS a one-page tax return with two words, I win and pay nothing. Well, I, I feel that, that, that that's just a good idea. I don't think people making that little money should pay anything in taxes. Uh, that's true. But 25,575 is the poverty level yeah, right now that's the poverty at this level. moment in time. Right. Well, that could change, of course, depending on the cost of living. Well, that's a lie, isn't it? The CPI is a lie. Well, yeah, because... because uh, they keep it low because the uh, the proposed fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage uh, would just uh, keep your nostrils above water. It's still not equal to the cost of living. And what about Trump's promised haircut for hedge fund managers, who under current law count some income for their jobs as capital gains, which means they pay lower tax rates. I think that scumbag uh, that um, raised the price of the HIV drug, uh, drug to, to <laughs> from like $13 to over $700, I believe he is a former hedge fund manager, just a smug, arrogant, young, yuppie looking guy. If we can do it, we'll do it. It's as simple as that. Well, without remorse. He has no remorse. Without any regulation. Well, I mean, he doesn't. He, he doesn't oh, care. No. He doesn't care at what expense his profit comes. What does Mr. Corleone say. say in the Godfather? It's only business. So, well, that was it's the only that was the excuse. Yeah. Right. It's nothing personal. Right, but he it's does. Business. But he doesn't care about the victims. This, of this not. arrogant it's business. scumbag. Yeah. Nothing personal. So business. So what does that mean? When you throw words around like business and capitalism. You know, it's like these are these are words that pe that are ingrained, embedded, and in, in, in brainwashed into Americans' minds. I, I, I'm I'm smart enough to know that my history books were full of lies when I grew up. You know, both Trump and Bush eliminate the loophole known as the carried interest, but Trump replaces the capital gains rate of 23.8% with the top income tax rate of 25%. Not much of a difference. And because the financiers, ordinary income would benefit from a big income tax cut, they could come out ahead. And that points out a problem. Ahead, they've been ahead for decades. The eventual Republican nominee for president will face. Right now, in the primary campaign, they are competing over whose tax cut is the biggest. Oops. And they're barely even playing down the relief they would give the top 1%. And how much money does a rich person need to be content? Oh, my heart bleeds for every one of them. In 2012, exit polls found that 53% of voters believed Mitt Romney's policies favored the wealthy more than the middle class. And Romney won only 47% of the popular vote. It's hard to see 
how another Republican, even a master salesman as Donald Trump, could sell the same platform in 2016. Well, the Republican, the Republican clown bus has just become the insane asylum on wheels. Mm. Should be getting lighter, but it ain't. No, the people just don't want to quit. Yeah. They don't want to step down. They want to be stepped. They, they'll step down if they're forced down. But you know, I, honestly, I thought Scott Walker would uh, outlast uh, uh, Carly Fiorina. Of course. But she's such a witch that she she won't go away. She's like she's like that. Well, Carly Fiorina, Ben Carson, and Donald Trump represent the Tea Party angle. They don't like career politicians. And that's how simple those three are up there. They don't like They don't want a career politician in there. In other words, even Republicans want to do away with a congressman or senator being in there for thirty years. They want they want everybody to be a two term You see them get rid of Boehner, didn't you? They got rid of cancer, didn't they? Okay. That's what they're doing. As long as they can bring it about, that's what they're doing. But the replacement but the replacements man. are worse. Could be. Being that the party is drifting more to the right towards fascism, towards the corporate plutocracy, the replacement for Boehner and uh, we'll look at the replacement for uh, Michelle Bachman, uh, 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 Gomer, uh, um, Gomer Pa, go, go, uh, Gautner, uh, I don't know, the ball-headed guy. Gomert, Gomert, yeah. Looks like um, Gautner. He, he's he's a nut. He's so a nut. is the, uh, the new uh, McCarthy. He's obviously bigoted. Uh, he's not shy to let you know. Yeah, they're all. You know, so you ready for lunch? Yes. Okay. We are now going to break for lunch, and you, you will be joined by How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Verses. Just mm. simply click, pause, read, and learn. Mm. Followed by our uh, voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrow III, with promo and his words of wisdom. And we'll catch you for the second half of this uh, show, the first show of October. It's a hard-hitting show. Yeah, hard hitting. The first show of October mm This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com.
Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we are back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for doing promo. Oh. Now for the second half of this week's show, Progressive Discussions. Oh. What you got there, Dr. Bill? Uh, let me put that on the side. Let's get to bar. Two drugs. Two drugs? That help suppress the immune system in organ transplant patients may have a future as the long-sought birth control pill for men. Um, anti-rejection, anti-organ rejection drugs, huh? The drugs, cyclosporin A, also known as CSA, and FK506, also known as Cracolimus. Yeah, Cracolimus. Uh, uh, Craco. Craco, yeah. Craco. Craco? T. Taco. T. I wonder. A. C. R. O. Craco. I wonder what side effects are associated with these drugs. They are given to transplant recipients to reduce the risk that the patient's body will reject its new organ. They work by preventing the immune system from making a protein that would otherwise mobilize T cells to attack. Specifically, they do this by inhibiting an enzyme called calcineurin. By studying mice, researchers in Japan identified a version of calcineurin that is found only in sperm. This particular version contains a pair of proteins called P, 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 3, C, C, and P, 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 3, R, 2. So people who receive organ transplants they do they have to permanently take these drugs for for the rest of their life that's correct so you can't stop taking them to figure out what these proteins do the researchers created male mice that were unable to make the p p p 3 c c protein and thus produced less of the p p p 3 r 2 protein then they studied the knockout animals to see how they were different from regular mice. The knockout mice still had sex with female mice. But the females didn't become pregnant. The absence of the PPP3CC C must be making the males infertile. Regular male mice that got either the CSA or the FK506 for two weeks became infertile because the middle part of their sperm was rigid. Further tests showed that it took only four days for FK506 to render the mice infertile and five days for CSA to do the same. <laughs> When the mice stopped taking the drugs, their fertility returned after one week. So, one week to kick in, one week to return to normal. Considering these results in mice, sperm calcineurin may be a target for reversible and rapidly acting human male contraceptives. The study led by Harukiao, Hiroki Ka, Harohiko, Harohiko. Sounds Japanese to me. Mayata, 
of Osaka University's Research Institute for Microbial Diseases was published on Thursday in the journal Science. Sounds like a male birth control pill to me. I'm just wondering on the side effects. Mm -hmm. Takes about a week to kick in and a week to come off. <clears throat> the candidates atop the GOP presidential field are ramping up political attacks aimed at Muslims. A move designed to appeal to hardline conservatives. But party elders worry that escalating anti-immigrant rhetoric could cost Republicans the White House in 2016. The aggressive words, in particular from frontrunners Donald Trump and Ben Carson, have exacerbated a widening rift between the GOP's pragmatic and ideological wings as the party tries to avoid losing a third consecutive presidential election. His relationship with the nation's Hispanic community already strained. Trump vowed on Wednesday to deport any Syrian refugee taken in by the United States. Most likely, they would be Muslim. And Trump warned they could be Islamic State militants in disguise. <laughs> if I win, they're going back. They're going back um, just on the, base, the basis that they're, they're Muslim. Carson a retired neurosurgeon launched a petition on Thursday challenging the nation's largest Muslim advocacy group's tax-exempt status, escalating his ongoing rift with the U.S. Muslim community. The Council on American Islamic Relations last month called for Carson to quit the presidential race after he said a Muslim should not serve as president. He has since clarified his position, stating he wouldn't support a radical Muslim who did not support the Constitution. And in a Thursday radio interview, Carson said the same standard should apply to a Supreme Court justice. He said Islam is a lifestyle that he need to know about before making an appointment to the nation's highest court. If I were the one nominating such a person, I would spend a good deal of time looking at their background and seeing if it is consistent with the kinds of standards that we expect from such a position. There are currently no Supreme Court vacancies and no presidential candidates adhere to Muslim law. Although some conservatives have repeatedly tried to link President Obama to Islam. He is a Christian. Carson's fortunes have surged, surged since he first said he wouldn't support a Muslim president. He raised $700,000 and added more than 100,000 Facebook friends in the 36 hours after making the comment. The focus on Islam comes as Republicans work to repair a strained relationship with the nation's surging Hispanic population, a critical voting block in presidential elections. The U.S. Muslim population is a fraction of the size of the Hispanic community. Yet the party's overall tone could complicate broader outreach efforts. Political observers in both parties agree. Among them, the GOP's 2012 presidential nominee, Mitt Romney, 
more than anything he said of his lessons from his failed campaign is that Republicans must do a job, better job at connecting with minority voters. I think it's been unfortunate that some of the rhetoric has clouded the picture that some people think we are anti-immigrant. Nothing could be further from the truth, Romney said, prompting audible laughs of disbelief from the crowd gathered at a Washington conference on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Their bigotry is, can never be more obvious, even though they try to hide it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I wonder what, what possessed them to be such miserable, negative people in all ways. They lack oxytoxytocin! Yeah, but that... I tell you. That trivi trivializes it. it. It makes people feel sorry for them. They're not victims, they're demons. Well, what about uh, alcoholics? Drug addicts? Yeah, but you know Should what? Should we feel sorry a, for an them? An alcoholic and a drug addict can still be a decent, generous individual, hospitable to their guests. But they are a respecter of their drug or their alcohol, aren't they? Yeah, it's almost... Above all else. Like, almost like it's idolatry. If it were religious. I noticed that, you know what I noticed? Uh, that um, from personal, uh, from knowing people personally, I noticed that when a person uh, uh, um, stops being an alcoholic and refrains from alcohol, uh, booze, they uh, all of a sudden, they choose a, a different uh, ups, uh, yes, you never obsession. get rid of the. Uh, you never get rid of the, uh, the addictive quality. They become. They become. Uh, um, That's why a cigarette smoker, when he gives a cigarette, should suck on something. Well, this one one person who used to be a drug addict is now a chain smoker. Well, there you go. This other alcoholic I used to know, who uh, taught in um, in college as a professor. Uh, uh, and, and, and was a Republican. Actually, uh, now, uh, when, when he went off alcohol, uh, he, he drinks massive amounts of coffee all day and all night. So they substitute one addiction for well, another. Had, well, the drug, uh, drug addicts, they, they like their carbs. Okay? They're carboholics. Well, I just, uh, I just know the person chain smokes. Well, maybe the person chain smoked before, while mm -hmm. they were a drug addict also. You know. Could be. Well, they're still a drug addict because they're smoking. Yeah, ad ad mm -hmm. addiction to nicotine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in a, in a non-stop fashion, you know, mm -hmm. like... Uh, I told you, the, uh, well, I was watching one of the old Dean Martin roasts on YouTube, and this was a roast of Jackie Gleason. And Jackie Gleason, as soon as one cigarette was uh, Lit up another. gone, he light up another one. Him and Dean Martin continuously smoking over and over and over. Yeah, so anyway. My husband Steve. Ah, a light subject. And I have been married for eight years. Eight. And together for a total of twelve. He's okay. 31 and I'm okay. 28. Okay, so they dated for a while. Right. Five years ago, I cheated on him with my best friend. I, I, don't, I don't go for that, uh, women having male friends. Unless the male friend is gay. But, you know, this heterosexual male friends while you're uh, involved with somebody? My husband found out about it. I came clean about everything. Yikes. I haven't seen or been in touch with the other person since then. Mm. 
For the past five years, my life has been a living hell. Well, it's, a, it's only a matter of time. It's, 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 uh, there's nothing but trouble involved with that. Steve. Having male friends, you know. Goes through my phone, my texts, my calls, my emails, social media, and mail. The damage was done already, huh? I just ignore this because I have nothing to hide. Distrust. If I'm talking on the phone, I'm instantly accused of talking to my boyfriend. And this is what's going on now, before it, he wasn't like this. He has been emotionally and verbally abusive. and has been physically abusive twice. When I suggested marriage counseling, he said, I wasn't worth it. You never have been and never will be. Well, there goes that. T taking two, two to tango. He's thrown me out on numerous occasions. And then once I pack up my personal belongings, he becomes loving and caring towards me. Oh, please don't leave. But if you stay, I don't want you here. <laughs> if you stay, I want to beat up on you occasionally, okay? Do you mind? Do you mind? <coughs> Two weeks ago, he sent me a text saying, I had two hours to get home or he was throwing all my stuff in the front lawn. When I got home, he had all my stuff packed. But then he doesn't want her to leave. I moved out. <laughs> Steve and I have talked, but he still refuses marriage counseling. He wants me to move back in. Oh, there we go. Says he loves me and doesn't want me to leave. She might as well keep all her things in the luggage. <laughs> Don't unpack. He said he will give me a month to move back in or he's filing for divorce. But then when she, she moves back in, he wants her out again. That's why he said leave everything in the luggage. I don't know what to do. Ugh. I've lost all but one of my friends and I have lost contact with most of my family because of Steve. So I don't have many people to talk to. I know the easiest thing would be to go back to him. But I just feel in a few months everything will go back to the way it was. You mean the way it was with the abuse or the way it was before she cheated? The abuse, right? Holy crap. This is Amy Dickinson's answer. Uh, Please, Shut stay up. away. Do not return to this relationship. Your husband has locked you into a classic cycle of abuse, manipulation, rage, and blame. This will continue until you figure out how to stay permanently away from him. So it sounds like Amy Dickinson uh, is telling her it's not going to end. If you give in to Steve's emotional manipulation and return to cohabit with him, he may likely raise the stakes during the next cycle. This is dangerous. Well, even though she started it, yes, I agree, I agree with Amy Dickinson. You have already lost friends and family members due to their frustration watching helplessly while you stay in an abusive relationship. Divorce and distance, not couples counseling, is the answer for you two. You should definitely pursue counseling. 
on your own. Yeah, he obviously he wants no part of um, of couples counseling. No. Not at all. Or what they call marriage counseling. Oh uh, well. Um, well, since we read that already, yeah, I guess uh, we will move on to this. Or maybe we'll move on to this. Yeah, right I, just, here. I just want to say greetings. Greetings to a, a friend of mine who uh, who runs a uh, very large, outstanding organic non-GMO farm in Kentucky. He's from originally from California, and he's one of my uh, 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 he's a member of a few of my Facebook groups, Mr. Uh, uh, Stephen Santangelo. Greetings to you. Shout out to Stefan Santangelo. He, uh, he also is a beekeeper. He raises his own honey. Um, the gentleman I told you about, what he said about extracting royal jelly, propolis, and pollen from the hive is detrimental to the queen and to the hive. And uh, anyway, he grows many things. So shout out to Stefan Santangelo. He also is a... Uh, advocator of fitness for older folks. He uses exercise bands, which he sells. I've been using bands myself. Outstanding. It is not a toy. Uh, it's very underestimated, but it, but it, very effective. Is that a marching band? Form of exercise. Yeah, McNamara's band. Oh. Yeah, no, it's a band made of, you know, very heavy Come duty Randy. latex. Mars! Not the candy company. Appears Flat. to have flowing rivulets of water. At least in the summer. Scientists reported on Monday in a finding that boosts the odds of finding life on the red planet. Mm -hmm. Is that why Peter Brabeck of Nestle's is interested in going to Mars? <laughs> or that was a joke. That, that Mars is not the dry, arid planet that we thought in the past. Well, the, you could see the poles of, of Mars. There, there, there are white caps on both ends of Mars. So therefore, if there are white caps, there's moisture. Scientists in 2008 confirmed the existence of frozen water on Mars. Now, instruments aboard NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter yielded what researchers said is the strongest evidence yet that water in liquid form trickles down certain Martian slopes. It could be bacteria on Mars too. And because liquid water is essential to known life, the finding could have major implications for the possibility of microscopic life on the Earth's neighbor. It suggests that it would be possible for there to be life today on Mars. The evidence of flowing water consists largely of dark, narrow streaks on the surface that tend to appear and grow during the warmest Martian months. And they fade the rest of the year. The streaks are in places where the temperature is as low as 10 below zero. The rivulets, if that's what they are, are about 12 to 15 feet wide, 300 feet or more long. They apparently consist of wet soil, not standing water. The water is believed to contain certain salts. Not uh, ordinary table salt, but magnesium perchlorate, magnesium chlorate, and sodium perchlorate like road salt, used to melt ice and snow on Earth. Such compounds can prevent water from freezing at extremely low temperatures. 
that would explain how water could exist in liquid form on Mars, which has an average temperature of minus 85 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold, man. That's real cold. In addition to supporting life, the presence of liquid water could make things easier for visiting astronauts. Water could be used for drinking and for creating oxygen and rocket fuel. NASA's goal is to send humans there in 2013. This week a movie opened with a Martian stranded on Mars. That's a long trip. I don't know how he gets stranded there, but he does. No, I mean the uh, sending man to Mars is not is not like uh, going to the moon. <laughs> no, it isn't. Michael Meyer, you got to be prepared to stay a while. Yeah. So you'd have to build shelter, water. And food. Well, you you would have to have like um and clothing, a, like a self-contained um, mm -hmm. biosphere, a biosphere, uh, like a space station, but a, a biosphere type of space station. Yeah. Michael Meyer, the lead scientist for NASA's Mars exploration program, said the only definitive way for to for now to determine whether there's life on Mars is to collect rocks and soil for analysis on Earth. Something a U.S. lander set for liftoff in 2020 will do. Water is one of the most precious resources necessary for a human mission to the Red Planet. The more evidence we find of it, the more encouraged I am for future Mars missions. These streaks were spotted by Mars Orbiter's High Resolution Telescopic Camera. Another onboard instrument detected the chemical signature of salt compounds combined into water. The source of the briny water is a mystery. Scientists said it could be melting ice, an aquifer, water vapor, from the thin atmosphere, or some combination. Alfred McEwen of the University of Arizona in Tucson, a scientist on the project, said that there appeared to be a significant volume of water speculating it could fill many Olympic swimming pools. But it is spread thin. Present-day Mars is nothing like ancient Mars. Three billion years ago, our most Earth-like neighbor had a huge ocean. But something radical happened. Exactly what remains a mystery. The notion of water and life on Mars has irresistible, has been irresistible to Earthlings for generations. In 1877, Italian astronomer, astronomer, Giovanni Schiaparelli, Giovanni Tortellini, spied what he called canali, Italian for channels. Yeah, I'm having a tortellini tonight with on Mars. Sun-dried tomato Alfredo sauce. Quattro formaggi o tortellini, four cheeses. But. The word was mistranslated as canals in English, causing imaginations to run wild. Maybe Mars was closer to the sun um, and pre uh, that billions of years ago, I mean, at, at that time. Couldn't be. You are now denying physics. So Mars... Cosmology. Was, so Ma Mars was always in the same position it is now? The universe has been expanding. Well, if it's expanding, 
mm -hmm. then that, that, that probably contributed to the Martian ocean uh, drying out. Well, we don't know that. We can the briny water. We can make a lot of corned beef on Mars, too. In the early 1900s, amateur astronomer Percival Lowell claimed to have spotted irrigation canals and theorized they were built by Martians. Come ride in my gondola. You know, they, they, they took a photo of what looks like a sphinx on Mars. But that's like looking at a cloud and saying, oh, the cloud. It's called anthropomorphism. You are attributing human characteristics and stuff to like animals and clouds and ground. Yeah, they like they that. said that about moon. Uh, they they claim to have moon. seen they claim to have seen um, uh, vehicles and 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 things that look like machinery on the moon, extraterrestrial. Abandoned machinery. I mean, you could you, your imagination could run wild with anything. However, you must prove all things. Hold fast that which is good, and toss the rest in the proverbial garbage can. Hey, my brother-in-law, he was take doing some of this art photography where you put. Uh, food coloring in water and, and, and you pour the water and as the water sp uh, splashes as it, a, 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 and you take a, a quick photographs of it mm -hmm. and, and it takes various forms mm -hmm. you know the water the colored water splashing below into a glass <laughs> and you know and, and it takes forms it, look, it looks like any, anything you want to look like you know I mean I, I religious nuts Posted a, 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 a image of a cumulus cloud that has the uh, a shape like the face of Jesus, and they're saying it's a it's some kind of omen. But they don't know what the face of Jesus looks like. I know. They have an actor who portrays his face. Yeah, a Hollywood version of it, Jesus. Yeah. And who's the actor who played him in the movies? They're all Caucasians. Oh, there That's was all the there was more than know. one. There was more than one. Yeah. They're never, the they, face they know. they're never a, uh, um, a Semitic, Middle Eastern looking Jew person, a, a brown skin, black hair, a big schnozzola. <laughs> I mean, they never look like a typical person from that race at that time. They always look uh, Caucasian and they have a British accent. <laughs> All the Jesus. In 2008, NASA's Phoenix spacecraft landed on Mars and confirmed the long-suspected presence of ice in the soil. Mucuin says he believes the possibility of life on Mars to be very high. Well, the one thing they always say on ancient aliens is when they date something, you know, when they date ruins to be like 10,000 years old, uh -huh. they would say, how on earth could primitive people at that time with the tools that they had, how on earth can they lift, can they elevate blocks of stone that weigh many tons and stack them with such precision where you cannot even get a razor blade in between the stones, they had to have received help. And I tend to agree. I mean, there are certain things that are mysteriously unexplained, and you can't make logic out of it. So, you know, it's all in theory. Uh, like many, many things are in theory. Uh, the presidential primary season is in full swing. Yet there are so many of us who just don't care. Uh-oh, this is what I was afraid of. Okay, so this is another reason for me to start hammering at Americans. 
Perhaps this is because we no longer trust our government to represent us. No excuse. You gotta be involved. Regardless of political affiliation, a majority of Americans agree that large corporate donations negatively influence U.S. policy. Even Donald Trump has exposed the truth that big donations are ruining politics. Well, let's say that's a sign that our democracy needs a tune-up. That's putting it mildly. A tune-up needs a complete overhaul. Needs a rebuilt engine. Enter. The, the system has to be changed. Larry Lessig. Lessig is a Harvard Law professor and Democratic presidential candidate running as a referendum president. Have you heard of him? So no. Just now I heard of him. Thank you. I wonder why that is. I mean, I've heard I've I, I've heard of Jill Stein and Rocky Anderson. Yeah, oh, yeah. Never I haven't heard, heard of them in this election at all, period. I never heard of this man until now. You can you don't even hear much about Martin O'Malley. Very little. And Joe Biden is way down. In, well, he's not even running. Oh, he dropped out? He never was in. Oh, these are people who want... This is just a measure, a poll that they take uh, to measure him against Hillary in case Hillary's support goes... They, they, they don't want, they don't want an, a repeat or an extension of the Obama administration into a third term. They, they, the people said, he's part of the Obama administration, we've had enough. Let it go, let it go. This means that if elected, he would serve only as long as it takes to pass one statute and then step down to let his vice president finish his term. This guy's a little wacky. Lessig proposes the Citizens Equality Act of 2017, a package of reforms that aims to bring systemic changes to stem corruption and make the electoral process more transparent and inclusive. Yeah, blah, 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 take the money out of politics, blah, 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 and then he's going to quit. Then he's going to step down. If passed, yeah. this act would allow members of Congress to truly align themselves with their constituents. <laughs> the constituents' needs. Instead of worrying about that corporate hand on their shoulder. Sounds like a, um, it sounds like an ig insignificant little, little, uh, a microscopic version of, uh, Bernie Sanders. Except Bernie Sanders is in it for the long haul. This guy wants to quit after his agenda is impl uh, Im uh, uh, implanted. This single issue platform is based on the belief that we must restore the people's representation in government before tackling other equally important issues such as climate change or gun control. Well, the people have to first get involved. They have to first vote. They have to get involved. Bonus credits to Lessig for not pointing fingers at corrupt individuals, opting instead to blame a rigged system that favors corruption. The Record, that's our newspaper, reported on Lessig's 2013 visit to Montclair State University, where he said, The United States has two parallel elections, an election of voting and an election of money. But The Record has yet to publish a note about his candidacy. It should cover Lessig's candidacy along with the others, as he is running an open campaign based on a simple idea that deserves our consideration. Yeah, but people are not going to go for the idea of him, him stepping down and not serving out his first term. People are going to find that strange. It's going to be a turnoff. Uh, but he means well. I mean, he sounds very progressive, but 
you know they want somebody who's solid and consistent and is going to stay there for the long haul the long t uh, term president uh, which is what you will get from a Bernie Sanders you know now um, all, everything you just said about him is something we've heard many times um, not on the on, on the on the mainstream media but on the internet in terms of internet media uh, we all know about Citizens United and corruption and politicians being paid off we, we know about all that but people like I said before people have to have to suck it up and get involved and everyone must vote even even the even the uh, <clears throat> the crazy and stupid people yeah. everyone must vote that's how you get involved, you know. So, anyway. Kudos to the writers of those letters. The dumbing down of America has occurred. This has to stop. The dumbing down of America? <laughs> it's already dumbed, dumbed down. It's getting dumber. What happened to respect for our president, whether you agree with his policies or not? We have lies about President Obama and about Planned Parenthood and candidates telling the American people they will change laws the day they take office. And some people believe it. We have two candidates who want Kentucky, who went to Kentucky to defend a woman who is breaking the law. Well, because, he, he, like Mike Huckabee, because he's a religious freak. He's a cultist. And like, Have to be in Ted Cruz. Yeah, and Ted Cruz also. Also, where is our humanity <sighs> for the millions of refugees? We should applaud President Obama for wanting to implement a path to citizenship for immigrants and for his not wanting to send <sighs> our young people to fight again in the Middle East. The refugees? What about the poor veterans? who are ignored coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq. There are a lot of problems which must be addressed. Let's start really questioning the candidates regarding their positions and their policies rather than cheering their name calling. Aren't we better than this? No, this guy sounds too liberal for me. He, he sounds like a pacifist. He uh, sounds like Barney the Dinosaur, no name calling, no, uh, 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 he thinks he's going to negotiate intelligently with the evil enemy. Ain't going to happen, brother. You're not, ain't got this bipartisanship coop singing kumbaya. You I may, love you, you, you love, love me. me. Uh, you, you're, you're having a pipe dream, you're having an ultra-liberal hipster wet dream. California dreaming from the from the you're a flower child from the 60s you're not gonna make friends you're not gonna make nice nice with the evil enemy they do not want to compromise with you you stupid ass evil put, empire. put that into your head the evil empire thank you for joining us for progressive discussions we'll see you next week say so long to these oh, so jabroni long. Americans the, oh, uh, hopefully we won't have voter apathy again. Otherwise, we usually don't have it in a presidential. Otherwise, our goose will be cooked for sure. But this is just a primary. Yeah, I know. So but they don't. But, but you know what? They, they don't realize that uh, you know the 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 manager of a baseball team is not to blame if his team loses uh, the World Series. You know, I mean, there's a team that are, go out on the field and you know what I mean so they think that the president is like a one-man gang which he's not you know so um, she, any, what did you do give it to Hillary already no Hillary forget it that corporate this witch oh that Gorgon that corporate this witch you can oh. all right we'll see you this has been a Mega Life 21 production